Okay, so as we agreed uh, yesterday or last time when we met, today we shall talk about semantics, the first item in our syllabus for this year. What is semantics? Semantics is the study of meaning. But what is meaning? Meaning itself is something very problematic because meaning is not stable and what can mean something for me it could mean something else for you that's why semantics is one of the most difficult areas in linguistics uh, simply speaking when you say for example what is the meaning of a word like book? There is a certain picture that comes to your mind. The picture of a book. What is the meaning of dog? A certain picture comes to your mind. The picture of a dog, which is an animal. Uh, four leg, mammal. Canines, but are dogs similar? Are books similar? Yes, there is a certain picture, as I said, comes across your mind about a certain shape of that dog, a certain shape of that uh, book, but books are different. There are different sizes of books, different colors of books. There are different types of this uh, type of animal, which is dog. So this is actually a, a, a quick example, or these are two examples to show to you how difficult to talk about meaning. Uh, these words book and dog represent something concrete they are objects when we go to abstract words or abstract concepts actually things are going to be more complicated for example what is the meaning of love what is the meaning of hope? What do they mean? Love for you could be something totally different from love for your friend or love for me. What is hope? What is happiness? What is democracy? Democracy. Most countries say we are a democratic country where there is no democracy actually for us. All dictators of the world understand democracy in a different way, in a totally different way. These are abstract words. So, look at this comparison between concrete words, concrete objects, and abstract concepts. This makes things more complicated. So this is a difficulty, actually a big difficulty of the study of meaning. As I said, Semantics is the study of meaning. But what type of meaning? Semantics actually studies the literal meaning, or in other words, the dictionary meaning. A meaning that we can pick up in a dictionary. We go and check it in a dictionary. But again, this is not the end of the story. Because meanings are different. 
with semantics we have pragmatics that deals with intended meaning or invisible meaning or hidden meaning which we shall talk about later on in the, in the next chapter but semantics itself although it deals with literal meaning but again literal meaning is complicated because we with literal meaning there are associations always when we speak even in our daily life in Arabic for example we say Dalalat al-Kalima what is Dalalat al-Kalima? it is the connotative meaning of the word Dalala connotation this is connotation so in using any word when we speak we think of its meaning literal meaning and most of the time we think of its connotation that's why we say for example to use this word in this situation is appropriate while to use another word in the same situation is inappropriate appropriate word inappropriate word appropriate situation inappropriate situation you see why we say this word is inappropriate because of what not because of its dictionary meaning rather because of its connotations we have two types of meaning in semantics and of course, there are different types of, of, of semantic meaning. There are different types. We have uh, a chapter in, in, in a book written by Leach, Leach's book, Lisma Semantics, and Wana Semantics. Uh, this chapter is called Seven Types of Meaning. So we have seven types of meaning in the domain of semantics. But it is not included in our syllabus. Today we shall talk about two different types of meaning, conceptual meaning and associative meaning. Conceptual meaning is the literal meaning, a meaning that represents the concept of a word or the word, a meaning that we can pick in any dictionary. For example, we go to the word dog. I go to the dictionary, I find a definition for word. As I said, it is animal. What kind of animal? It is a mammal, M-A-M-M-A-L, -M -M It has four legs, etc. But the word dog itself has associations. Association with the meaning of word association with with the dog itself as an animal for example if, if, if you if you mention the word dog it could be associated with fear how most people are afraid of dogs especially those which are astray dogs no 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 not pets People are afraid of dog, of dogs. Uh, a word like needle, this is found in your book. The word needle. If you look at its dictionary meaning, it is an instrument, steel instrument. It is sharp and thin. I think you all know what is meant by needle, but is but it is associated with fear, right? But are you afraid of needles? Some of you are, some of you are not. So, what do we know? What do we understand from this? 
even even associations are not stable are not stable i said people are afraid of dogs all of them no of course there are people who are not afraid of dogs let's take another another word for example the word dark vulman are you afraid of dark or darkness for some people it is something terrifying for other people it is not children are expected to be afraid of dark while adult people are not so associative meaning again is not stable it depends on as you see for example age gender and we expect for example uh, women are afraid of needles but men are not afraid of needles women are afraid of dogs of course not all of them but this is uh, something common but men are not supposed to be afraid of dogs so this is and how meaning is not stable if we go back to the word dog we say it is associated with fear but this is or or, or not fear but but it is associated with dirt in our society we believe that dogs are dirty right نقول نجاسة but for the western society dogs are friends dogs are friendly dogs are beautiful so associative meaning you see is different from one society to another from one culture to another from one person to another I'm afraid of dark you are not afraid of dark I'm afraid of needle you are not afraid of needle so things are not stable uh, you see for example needle could be associated with pain illness blood drug thread knitting hard all of these are associations of the word needle of course you need to give other examples you need to think of other examples but i'm i'm mentioning needle because it is there in your in your book uh, we can give different examples on how associative meanings are different from one society to another for example a word like rose is associated with beauty right associated with love with passion that's why people give roses to each other as a gift as a present a husband gives his wife a rose friends give or exchange roses in certain occasions but this is very common in the western society in the western culture in our culture unfortunately roses are not appreciated as they are in the western society yes we sometimes give roses as a gift or present but this is very rare very rare in our society we prefer other types of gifts why because of the associations not only roses but even the colors of roses have associations a red rose is different from a yellow rose right a, a, a yellow rose is different from a white rose i mean different in association look at the word bull for example you know bull i think in our society it, it is associated with stupidity yes it is associated with stupidity 
but in the Western society, it is associated with strength, power. Right? For them, bulls are strong. For us, bulls are stupid. That's why they use the word bully or bullying. واحنا نترجمها بالعربي نقول يتنمر لاحظ the word bull bully is it translated not to for, sorry يعني ثور but translated into نمر ويتنمر why because the word bull in our society is associated with stupidity for them for the western society bull is strong power but for us it is stupidity that's why it is translated into tanammar yatanammar well kalimat yatanammar is derived from the word nimr right in our society the word nimr is associated with strength with power biha quwwah but not bull ولاحظوا how translation works هنا شوفوا الترجمه شلون اشتغلت a whole word has changed its meaning from bull to tiger from yatanammar العفو from thawr او bull to nimr او yatanammar one of the most famous basketball teams in the US is called Chicago or Chicago sorry Chicago Bulls Tehran Chicago تعتقدون انه مجتمعنا يقبل احد او فريق نسميهم ثيران؟ Is there any team in our society except to be addressed as being bulls? Huh? No. But in the US they call them Chicago bulls. Why in our society we do not accept this? Because bulls are stupid, not strong. Okay? I think the idea is clear another area where we find associations is our proper names look at our proper names we use them not because of their literary meaning we use them for their associations right for example most of us nowadays use religious names شخص اسمه حسن حسين محمد علي عباس Why we use these names? We use them for their associations And for ladies nowadays it is very common to use Umm al-Banin wa Zainab wa Fatima Why we use this, these names? We use them for their associ associative meaning uh, They are associated with something related to our religion, Islam And sometimes you see a strange name, for example. Why? It is, it, it is used after, for example, uh, a military reader, a historic reader, an actor or an actress. يعني انتشرت في فترة نهاية الخمسينيات أو الخمسينيات أسماء شخص إذا قاسم يسمي ابن عبد الكريم. صار اسم عبد الكريم قاسم. Why is this? Huh? Because of the association of the name with the leader Abdul Karim Qasim, former president of Iraq or former prime minister of Iraq. So we use our proper names for their associated meaning. I think the idea is now clear between concept, concepts, conceptual meaning and associations. Hopefully this lecture is, is, is very useful. And as I said last time, our my lecture are going to be very short in order in order to be uploaded easily to your classroom or Google Classroom. Thank you very much.